أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل الضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد أوصيكم بالتقوى After mentioning خطبة الحاجة we advise each and every one of you to fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى fear Allah في أي مكان in every place في أي حال in every situation في أي زمان in any time fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى as he deserves to be feared for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the best of your ability. Today's khutbah insha'Allah will be looking at some righteous deeds. Deeds that we can continue to do after the month of Ramadan. Because some of us, we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't exist for the next 11 months. But indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is alive. And He is not taking my slumber or sleep. And He doesn't have any deficiencies deficiencies. Indeed, Allah is alive and He will remain alive. He was the first before anything. So if we program that in our brains and in our hearts, we will understand that we still need to strive to do good deeds, to do more good deeds. And we have to understand the nature of good deeds. What is the benefit of doing righteous deeds? And in a hadith Qudsi, and a hadith Qudsi is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not contained in Qur'an because the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah and Hadith Qudsi is narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ نَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَتُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that his slave, that his servant doesn't come near to him except from the things that are beloved to Allah which Allah has made obligatory upon us. Which Allah has commanded us to do. We don't have a choice in the matter. Those are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and he has made an obligation upon us. This is one of the first ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we come near to him. And he continues to say in, in, in the narration, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَى يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And my slave, my servant will continue to come near to me with what? بِالنَّوَافِلْ With the optional, supererogatory deeds. حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ Until Allah says, I love him. So doing good deeds, brings us closer to Allah and doing good deeds earns the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to remember this because Ramadan we did a lot of good deeds and we want to carry on that for the next 11 months and one uh, guideline we should understand in doing good deeds the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he mentioned is consistency he mentions in a hadith collected in Sunan Ibn Majah 
اُقْلَفُوا مِنْ عَمَلِي مَا تُطِيقُونَ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْعَمَلِي أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْ قَلَّهُ He says, take only as much of the good deeds as you can for فَإِنَّ الْخَيْرَ عَمَلِي أَدْوَمُهُ For the best deeds are the deeds that you do consistently. وَإِنْ قَلَّهُ Even if it is a little. Because in Ramadan, we do a lot of good deeds and at the end of Ramadan, we crash and we burn. We have the burnout, as most people will experience. But the Prophet ﷺ, he's giving us the remedy to make sure that even though we do the deeds, make sure we do it consistently, even if it is a little bit. In another hadith, he mentions, min amali ma tutiquna, fa inna Allah la yamullu hatta tamullu. He says, do the deeds which you can do easily. As Allah, fa inna Allah la yamullu. Allah will not get tired or bored of giving us a reward until hatta tamullu. Until we get tired and bored and exhausted of doing good deeds. So we have to continue and maintain the consistency. And Aisha was asked once on another occasion about the deeds of the Prophet ﷺ. And her response was da'ima. Something that he did all the time. Something that he did all the time. Another thing we have to factor in, 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 in consideration is moderation in deeds. Moderation in good deeds. Three men came to the Prophet ﷺ, and this is a famous hadith, and they inquired about his deeds, and they thought their deeds was insufficient. It wasn't good enough. So one man, or the three men, they took an oath, and one said, I will continue to pray all night. And another one said, I will continue to fast. And another one said, I will refrain from women, and I wouldn't marry any women. Thereupon, the Prophet ﷺ, as he heard this, he responded to them. He says, أَنْتُمُ الَّذِينَ قُلْتُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا أَمَا وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأَخْشَاكُمْ لِلَّهِ وَأَتْقَاكُمْ لَا He says, are you the people who said such and such? He says, إِنِّي وَاللَّهِ Verily, I am the one who fears Allah most, more than you, and I am more obedient than you are towards Allah. And he says, لَكِنِّي He says, but I أَصُومُ وَأُفْتِرُ He says, I fast, but I break my fast. He says, wa usalli wa arqud. And I pray and I rest. And he says, wa atazawwaja nisa. And I marry women. And he, the Prophet ﷺ, he went on to uh, end the hadith and he says, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي. The Prophet ﷺ is telling these men moderation in good deeds. And no one can excel in deeds more than the Prophet ﷺ. You cannot do more than him. You cannot do more thinking that you're going to get more reward than him. For he is the best example. He is the one who came to show us how to do good deeds. So we have to change our mentality and think that sometimes we can do this and do this. And really the Prophet ﷺ didn't do this or he didn't advise this. Because we want our deeds to be accepted. We want our deeds to be accepted. And the Prophet ﷺ said, For men raghiba an sunnati, whoever desires other than my sunnah, other than my path, other than my life, other than the Qur'an and the Sunnah. فَلَيْسَ minni. He is not from me. He is not from Islam. He is not from my path. He is not from the Sunnah. This is his words. And we should also consider that another virtue of doing good deeds. In where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ He says that the verily the good deeds that erase the bad deeds. Verily the good deeds erase the bad deeds. So the more good deeds you do, the more bad deeds it will wipe out. So what good deeds have I prepared for you today in wanting to you, you to continue them outside of Ramadan? And I prepared five things, and I hope that you remember them after today's khutbah. And don't fall asleep. These five, the deeds are qiyam, siyam, sadaqah, withholding the tongue, and Qur'an. Qiyam, Siyam, Sadaqah, withholding the tongue, and Qur'an. And we've done all of these things in the month of Ramadan, right? And we want to continue. So we'll, let's look at some virtues, let us look at some points of some of these deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitabi wa aqim as-salah, inna as-salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. He says, recite. From tala yatlu, tilawa, utlu. Recite from what you have been revealed from the Qur'an. 
and establish prayer. Aqim is salah. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha iwal munka. Verily, that the prayer it prohibits or it protects one from wrongdoing and from uh, immoral acts, from bad deeds. The prayer, whether you pray the Salatul Matubat, the, the, the prescribed prayers, or the Nawafil prayers, all of the prayers they protect you from committing fahsha wal munka. This is a blessing from the Salah. This is a blessing from the Salah. And in another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ, إذا مسه الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that he created mankind in a state of impatience, or, uh, or he's not patient. And he says, whenever إِذَا مَسَّهُ, إذا مسه الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا That whenever evil touches him, whenever something bad happens to him, He's irritable and he's upset. And he says, وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا And he says that when good touches him, he is withholding. He doesn't give thanks. He's not grateful. Except for who? Who are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said are not like these three? إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ The people who pray. So, prayer protects us from being impatient. Prayer protects us from being irritable and upset. Prayer protects us from being ungrateful. And he went on to describe them and he says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ And they are the people who establish prayer constantly. They do it all the time. They don't just come in Ramadan, they don't just come in Juma once a year for Eid or just on a special occasion, Aqiqah, wedding, that's it. No. Most people who are irritable, who are upset, who are angry, who are not grateful, are the people who don't pray all, who don't pray at all, or who don't pray on time, or who don't pray consecutively, or pray consistently. I remember living in Morocco uh, for a few years. Every time I went to the masjid, they have these Darul Qur'ans and they're like small pockets of musallas where people would offer the prayer and they would teach Qur'an. And every time I would go, I would always see a man and I can remember distinctively, he was in a wheelchair. And you know the roads in these Arab countries, they're not, uh, they're not smooth, they're not like paved. A lot of them, they're in alleyways and they're cracked up and they're broken. But this man, he was in a wheelchair, subhanAllah. And every time I see, I see his wheelchair outside the masjid. He goes and he rolls up the little ramp, puts his wheelchair there, he gets out and he crawls, and he crawls to the salah. And I was just amazed because many times he made it there before me. I said, well, he has a physical disability. He has limitations. I don't. What's holding me back from getting there before him? But these are the people who establish prayer regularly. And in another hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, وَالْأَفْضَلُ صَلَاةِ بَعْضَ الْفَرِيضَ The best salah after the, the prescribed prayers are Salatul Layl, the prayer at night. This is what we have mentioned for Qiyam. Amma thani, the second one, Siyam, the second good deed. Remember I said five good deeds I'm going to tell you about in this khutbah. And we know many of the virtues and the blessings of Siyam because we've heard it in khutbah, in talk, in bayan. In Nasiha, that Siyam is a Jannah. It is a shield. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards Siyam for whatever He wants to reward for it. Depending on how you fasted, He's going to reward you for that particular deed. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Afdal Siyam ba'd al Ramadan, Shahrullah al Muharram. He said that the best fast after the, after the fasting of Ramadan is in Muharram. In another hadith from the authority of Abu Ayyub radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ ثُمَّ أَتْبَعُهُ بِسِتٍ مِنْ شَوَّالٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا فَكَأَنَّمَا صَامَ الدَّهَ He says, whoever, whoever fasts in Ramadan, then follow, follows it up from six days, six days in Shawwal, he will have a, and the word dahar, if I'm not mistaken, it means a very long time. So he will have a fast, that is as if he fasted for a very long time. In other narrations, it mentioned a year. 
right? So we have an opportunity to fast Muharram, Shawwal, and other places where we can observe the Siyam. In another hadith, Abdullah ibn Amr, he reported that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ahabbu Siyam ila Allah, Siyamu Dawood. Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salatu wa sallam. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, praising Dawood. And Dawood, he praised him also for his prayer and his Siyam. He said that the best fast with Allah, the most beloved fast to Allah, is the fasting of Dawood. And Kana, Kana Yasumu Yawman, Wa Yuftiru Yawman. He would fast one day and he would break his fast the next day. Meaning, if you fasted Monday, he would fast Wednesday, then he would fast Friday, and then he would fast Sunday. So the days were alternating. This is a good fast that the Prophet uh, he prays and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises. And it's also mentioned that he fasted half of the year. Because if you, if you do that throughout the year, then you have fasted half of the year. And also we have Mondays and Thursdays, the three white days, and any other specific day that Sharia has legislated for us. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. I mentioned two deeds that we should continue to follow up with after Ramadan, qiyam and siyam. The third deed, sadaqah. The third deed, sadaqah. And sadaqah is anything that you give in charity. Sadaqah is anything that you give in charity. And zakah is, is considered under the chapter of sadaqah. It falls under that specific chapter. Although zakat has specific conditions, uh, recipients, timings, so on and so forth, but it falls under that chapter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِكُمْ صَدَقَةٍ تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا He said, take from their sadaqah, take from their wealth, in order to what? تُطَهِّرُهُمْ To cleanse them, وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ And to purify them. Giving sadaqah, Spending your sadaqah is a means of purification for us. It cleanses our sins. It wipes away any bad things that we may have. Some of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, one of them, Abu Mas'ud, Uqba ibn Amr al-Ansari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, when this ayah came down, when this ayah was revealed, they used to carry loads on their backs to earn something so that they, what? That they may give it out in sadaqah. This is the zeal of the companions, radiallahu anhum, ajma'in. Anytime an ayah or a statement or an action of the Prophet sallallahu indicates a virtue or something, they will rush to do it. They will rush to do it. We shouldn't be sitting here every day not, or not engaging in good deeds. We should find opportunities to give sadaqah. Another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and those people who spend في الصرى, in prosperity in good times والضراء and in hardship and in poverty look, 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 at, look at the comparison here or look at the example في الصرى والضراء in good times you have a big 401k, big retirement, big fat bonus, ah, commission, paid every week, in good times, what darra, and in hardship, unemployed, broke, living paycheck to paycheck. Well kaadimin al ghayb and those people who re repress their anger, they don't retaliate against other people. Well aafina anin nas and those people who they pardon people, they forgive others. And Allah equates these three things. And it's not one or the other. These three things because there's wawul atf. And that indicates that all these three things, you have to do it. And, and, and. And what do you say? Wallahu yuhibbul muhsini. So he considers that these three things that people will do together, you're considered from the muhsini. You're considered from the muhsini. 
Well, some of you may say, Brother Najm, uh, I'm poor, I don't have anything to give. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith collected by Abu, or, or reported by Abu Dhar, uh, Abu Dhar, in which he said some of the companions, some of the people said, O Messenger of Allah, some of them, they offer the salah just like we do, and they spend in surplus out of their, out of their wealth. And you have to understand the context because you have to understand that th these are poor companions asking the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the rich companions. He's saying they pray like us, they offer the Salah like us, and they give out of their surplus of wealth. So what can we do, O Messenger of Allah? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, has Allah not prescribed for you a, a, a course in which you also can give Sadaqah? For every tasbih, there is a sadaqah. For every tamheed, there is a sadaqah. For every takbir, there is a sadaqah. For saying la ilaha illallah, there is a sadaqah. For enjoining good, there is a sadaqah. For pro prohibiting evil, evil, there is a sadaqah. And having relationships with your wife in a lawful marriage is a sadaqah. So no excuse. No excuses. If you don't have any money, you have the ability to give sadaqah. If you're poor, if you're broke, there's no excuse. Islam covers all people. Poor, middle class, upper class, rich, rich, wealthy. No one is excluded from giving sadaqah. The fourth deed. You mentioned qiyam, siyam, sadaqah. And the fourth deed is withholding, withholding the tongue. This is something that we strive to do in Ramadan. Right? And I hope that we strive to do this. We wasn't engaging in a lot of uh, nonsensical conversations wasteful uh, conversations. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmin akhir fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmat. And this hadith is such a basic principle that you can apply anytime, any place, anywhere. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let you say something good or keep silent. Say something good or keep silent. How many of us have treaded on the path of talking about someone, saying something ill about someone, saying something ill about my family, or the community, or the brothers, or the sisters, and fallen under a major sin, not realizing it. How many of us have fallen under, under this category? The Prophet ﷺ, he also mentioned in a hadith in where Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked him advice. And towards the end of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, he said, withhold this. He says, restrain your tongue. Restrain your tongue. What is the benefit of keeping silent and restraining your tongue, brothers and sisters? If you think about it, your tongue causes probably half of the major sins that there are. Your tongue causes half of the major sins. Backbiting slandering, lying, carrying false rumors, and zina. Zina? How, does, how is my tongue going to carry me to zina? The Prophet ﷺ, he says in a hadith, Al-Aynani zinahuma, al-Nadru, wal-Udhanani zinahuma, al-Istima'u, wal-Lisanu, zinahul kalam. He says that the zina of the tongue is that foul speech. Because you got if you're going to kick game to somebody, you're going to use your tongue. If you're going to speak to a sister or a girl or a woman, you're going to use your tongue. If she's going to speak to a brother or an individual, she's going to use her tongue. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says, this is zina. Even though you're not committing anything, but this is a form of zina. So if we were to withhold our tongues, just like we did in Ramadan, we would be able to achieve this uh, type of um, withholding and being able to protect ourselves from these bad deeds. And another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. The Muslim is one who doesn't harm another Muslim with his tongue or with his hand. A very basic concept. And he doesn't say mu'min, or he doesn't say muttaqoon, or he doesn't say muhsinun. He says al-Muslim. Everyone here in the masjid, all of the people around the world who are Muslim fall under this category. You don't speak about your brother or sister and you don't harm them 
with your tongue or with your hands. And last but not least is the fifth deed. We mentioned qiyam, we mentioned siyam, we mentioned sadaqah, we mentioned withholding the tongue, and we're going to mention the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is something that we strove to recite in the month of Ramadan. So we don't want it back on the shelves collecting dust. We don't want it in our back pockets. We want the Qur'an to be recited more and more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Naml, that the Qur'an is hudaun wa bushra lil mu'mineen. He said the Qur'an is guidance and it is a glad tidings for those who believe. And later on in the story, after he speaks about Prophet Lut and Prophet Saleh, he says, وَإِنَّهُ لَهُدَوْ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Again, he says the Qur'an is a guidance and it is a mercy for, for the believers. For the believers. Don't give up on the Qur'an. Continue reciting it. And when I say reciting it, it also means implementation. So when you come across the ayah of, of, of the alcohol is prohibited, don't drink. That is the implementation of that ayah. When you come across the ayah of don't go near the footsteps of shaitan, don't go near those footsteps. Don't go towards zina. Don't backbite. Because if you just recite it, then on Yawm al you didn't implement it, it will be held against you. It will be held against you. And in a hadith collected by Imam Ahmed Tabarani and Al-Hakim, they mention, and I'm only just giving you a few pointers from each of these deeds because there are a lot to talk about. But I want you to go home with a comprehensive message in your minds. I want you to go home with something that will stick. And if you can't do any of these five deeds, you'll do pick one, inshaAllah. You'll pick one. They say, or they say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that the Quran will intercede for us on the day of judgment. The Quran will say, Oh, our Lord, I deprived him of sleep at night. So let me intercede for him on the day of judgment, and the Quran will be allowed to intercede for the individual who read it at night, indicating that there's a virtue for reading Quran at night. It is important for us not to give up this book. This book is better than Harry Potter, Maze Runner, Kite Runner, any of the fictitious books you read. Any novels, stories, fables, the Quran is better than all of these books. None of those books will guide you. Not a single, not one of those books will guide you. But the Quran will guide you. So how is it that us as a community, the people here in Majid Siddiq and your respective uh, communities, how can we benefit and help one another in these five deeds? Amma qiyam, the Prophet sallam, we know he would offer qiyam all the time in many instances. And the companions, there are many narrations of different companions joining him for Qiyam. So as a community, you can establish Qiyam. Bring some of the, the Qurra from the community and establish Qiyam outside of Ramadan. Or establish it in your own households. At least first and foremost with your families. Pray Qiyam. And if you need a testimonial, go ask any student of knowledge or sheikh about his subjective understanding about Qiyam what he feels from Qiyam. And perhaps that will encourage you to pray Qiyam on your own. The second was Siyam. There are many opportunities to fast outside of the month of Ramadan. So the community here perhaps, or in your own households or communities, you can organize, choose a day, Mondays or Thursdays, and say that we're going to fast on this day, and invite the people and have a brother or sister sponsor the iftar to continue the tradition of fasting. So that when next Ramadan comes, fasting is easy for you. And Masadqa, you can continue to work with the programs here that they have at the masjid and in the communities to reach out to other people, to give da'wah, to give money, to give food. These are all considered uh, programs of sadaqa. Withholding the tongue. If you're hanging around someone who constantly speaks about other people, advise him. If he's your sister, if he's your brother, if he's your uncle, cousin, grandfather, advise them. Because this is what the Muslims should do. I want good for you, you want good for me. So if, if you're saying something wrong, you're backbiting, you're lying, you're stealing, you're doing this, advise the brother. This is how we can do it as a community. And last but not least, the Qur'an. We should know how everyone recites the Qur'an here. 
And sometimes some people are a bit apprehensive because they actually can't read the Quran at old age because they didn't make the effort when they were young. But that should still, that should not stop you from reading the book of Allah. So work with your masjids and your community leaders to make sure that you have Quran classes for adults, for your children, for your adult men, the old men, the young men, and especially the women. It's unfortunate that here within the South Ozone Park, Richmond Hill community, I don't know a one single female who has memorized the Quran. That is a shame. There's so many massages here, been around 30 years, 20 years. There's not one single female that I know, that I can think of, maybe I'm wrong, that who has memorized the Quran. We know brothers. Brothers are always on this path. But I'm not for the sisters. Very difficult. So that means we're doing a poor job in making sure that all the people are able to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last, in closing, I want to say that the whole purpose of talking about righteous deeds, about mentioning these five deeds, about giving the recommendation to the community is to avoid sin. And the virtue in avoiding sin, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, in tajtanibu kaba'ir ma tanhawna anhu nukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa nudkhilkum wa nudkhilkum mudkhalan karima. If you avoid major sins, if you avoid major sins, which you are prohibited from doing, we will remove from you your lesser sins. And what? And we will admit you into a noble entrance. And that entrance, inshallah, will be Jannah. If we can give up the major sins, continue doing deeds, good deeds, erase the smaller sins. Insha'Allah, we will be from the people who will be admitted into paradise. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to qabul Allah minna wa minkum to accept from all of us and from me and to accept our siyam and our qiyam. Allah to qabul siyamana wa sujoodana wa ibadatana wa qiyamana. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. As-salamu alaykum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر